Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Melgus 24 Rocks. Uh, we are almost ready to begin uh, with our talk show with a great bunch of uh, Melgus 24 Sailing Rock Stars. We still have some minutes to wait. Uh, all my guests uh, are almost ready to begin uh, some really nice chat along the story of the Melgus 24 class, but uh, we can wait some minutes to build up the audience. Uh, we are broadcasting live on uh, the uh, Facebook page of the International Melgus 24 Class Association. I'm Mauro Melandri, I'm the press officer of the class, and uh, I have to thank Pire Salmisto for the great effort, the class manager that uh, she provided to go forward with the, with the organization of this great party. We are almost ready to begin, so guys, still uh, a couple of minutes uh, of waiting time, and uh, we will be again inside of the incredi incredible history of the Melgus 24. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another appointment with uh, the International Melgus 24 Class Association. I'm Mauro Melandri. I'm broadcasting live from uh, Italy, from Ravenna, my hometown. I'm the press officer of the International Melgus 24 Class Association, and I want to introduce you some of the most representative sailors that made the story of the class. But first of all, uh, among my guests, Piret Salmistu, the class manager. Hi, Piret. Hi, thank you. Absolutely very happy to see all of you, uh, however online, but still, you know, uh, we haven't seen for a while. So uh, looking so much forward to it, but especially looking forward to this chat night today. And uh, one more message from me. Happy birthday, Tono. That's a special day for you. Thank you. you know, just a coincidence, but happy birthday anyway. And uh, yeah, love to love to hear all those stories, uh, you know, what you have for, for us. So, Piret, you are the class manager, but we have uh, also with us the president of the International Melgus 24 Class Association, Laura Grodin. Hi, Laura, how are you? Very good, Mauro. And thank you and Perrette and all the speakers for being with us. I think this is uh, really exciting to have these for the class. Unfortunately, I think it's going to make us all even more sad that we're not out sailing right now. 
Um, but I hope that everyone is uh, safe and that we will get back on the I'm excited to uh, hear from those who have been with the class, really with Harry from the beginning, but also uh, those, uh, some like me, who uh, are relatively new. So uh, on with the show. Thank you, Laura. And the Michael host for tonight will be Fred Federico Michetti. Ciao, Fede. Ciao, everyone. How are you? And sorry, my connection is not very good because I'm still stuck with my family in the mountains. So I have to work with my 4G. So hope you can listen and understand me. Ciao out to everyone. And Ciao, Fede. In going inside of the name of tonight, we will have Mike Buckley. Hi, Mike. Hey, Mauro. Hey, everyone. How are you? Harry Melges the third. Hi, Harry. Hey, Mauro. Hi, everyone. Happy birthday, Tonu. Then we have Scott Nixon. Hi, Scott. Hi, Mauro. How are you today? Hope everybody's well. Yeah, it seems that uh, every, everybody is well. Uh, and we are here to talk about the Magus 24 class. Uh, and then we have Tiziano Nava. Tiziana, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, maybe here you have also Flavio Favini. It seems that we have some still some problem of connection, but uh, Fred, it's time to start with uh, the, the unbelievable story of the Melgas 24 class. So going with some uh, memories, starting from the beginning of your time on the Melgas 24, you will be the co-host with me tonight. So feel free to go inside of the chat and to go asking to our guest whatever you want about this incredible one design mode. I mean, thank you very much, Mauro. I'm very proud to be here. I'm just sorry that Mike is here with us, but uh, somehow we have to handle that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> thank you for coming. I'm very excited. I, we just received the news from the Italian Premier that from uh, May 3rd, we will have a sort of uh, more easy lockdown and uh, hopefully we will be back sailing very soon, at least in Italy. So, Fede, I know that you are a very, very experienced sailor inside of uh, the Mega 24 class. You won, uh, you, you were for uh, uh, five times on the top of the podium of the world. So, I think that uh, you have memories that uh, link to you to each one of our guests. So, Go inside with the first memory, and I think that uh, we have to return to the time of uh, La Rochelle. I mean, yeah, the, the, the 24 is uh, my favorite boat, and I have so many great uh, memories into that. And first of all, thank you very much, Harry, to create such an amazing boat, and, and it's been so fun. Uh, obviously, La Rochelle it's, uh, it's a, has been a very important moment in my life, was uh, we went from two years uh, with George Zuccoli and Ali Ali team, and we went to La Rochelle more to enjoy the spirit and have Giorgio sailing for one more regatta in his life and uh, somehow turn out in a great success and we won the world. Has been, I think, I mean, for sure, has been the most important moment in my sailing <coughs> career. and. Uh, I'm so I'm so proud of what we achieved. I still remember that uh, was a very challenging regatta, a lot of boats, a lot of wind, and I remember the last day sailing against Harry and full throttle team in a in a in an amazing match race with I don't know I cannot remember Harry how many OCS and how many start we did that the last day I was I mean was was scary but Ali Ali was. Uh, was there at the last day third for the first time because for in both 98 and 99 we went on the water the last day against Vince Brun team uh, losing the world at the last uh, race and and La Rochelle was completely different and we won but uh, I still remember a great night Harry in the in the restaurant eating uh, oyster all together, Ali Ali and full throttle, and then the day after fighting has held to win the world. I think that this is the spirit of the Majesty 24. Great friend, but at the same time, big fighting in the water. So La Rochelle has been the top. 
I really like that hat you were wearing, Fetty. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Mike, old school. Mike, uh, in these days, we have no hiking strap, no hiking pad, nothing. So it was for real men. And this is why you grew up so later, you know? <laughs> All right. I feel like you've kind of taken that throughout your whole career, kind of the no hiking, just kind of I know. cruising exactly. around a little bit. <laughs> Big smile. Yeah, yeah no, these, uh, I mean, I have this picture in my computer and it, it's a great memory. By the way, guys, we are showing a, a great bunch of pictures provided by the International Magus 24 Class Association photographer, Pierrick Content. He uh, was uh, really supporting us, and uh, I have some really good memories uh, coming from him. Uh, something like uh, this one, Fede. Maybe yeah. you remember also this picture. I mean, I, I, I remember that, again, uh, we went... We we went to La Rochelle to have a sort of holiday, and and the first day was a disaster. I remember I don't I don't remember exactly the name, but it was average of 30, 35, and was like the clear sign mm -hmm. that Ali Ali was uh, almost at the end of the story. And then I don't know why, but uh, we were able to. This is a cool picture, Mike, and uh, we were able to to somehow did like five bullets in a row. And, and again, the last day was epic, it was blowing 25 knots. And I remember that we went to the starting line in like 60 boats and the last, uh, the last race, we were maybe less than 25 with all the OCS. So it was very challenging. I remember this day like, uh, like, like today, really. Fred, there is something that uh, you bring all the time with us, with you, that is uh, remembering you. The incredible moment that you had uh, in uh, La Rochelle. We were talking about that when you won the Belgas 20 World in uh, uh, Scarlino uh, a few years ago, and it was uh, really emotional for you. Can you explain something about uh, that? I mean, I was the guy in charge of uh, uh, installing the jeep and the jeep force day. At these days, that uh, the Cunningham was with a block on the furler, and I remember that I was on the bow. Uh, getting ready, I put the pin, and then I receive a phone call. Probably was Mike, because he's always calling in the, in the wrong moment. So I remember that I pick up the phone, I start talking, and then we went sailing, and this day was blowing very hard, and somehow uh, during the downwind, at this, in these days, the, the jeep was uh, totally full downwind. So I remember that ready to drop, and the jeep was not opening, and it was a disaster. And I remember that my pocket becomes super heavy. And I remember especially the moment that I put the pin, but I forgot to put the ring in. So I don't know how <laughs> I jump on the bow. Thanks God the pin was into the, the drum box. And I don't know how it was possible. I put the pin back and we were able to unfold the jib and win the regatta. So uh, this was, a, was obviously a great moment also because I understand how stupid I am. And Harry you know how much time I'm spending on the phone over the regatta, and he's always very upset on that. So I, 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 I don't improve my habits, but um, I remember that, okay, this was September, and for Christmas, Giorgio called me to his house, and he gave me this uh, ring ding in gold. You're using the computer audio. I got it. Saying that, hello? Uh, Fred, we had some uh, some voice coming from Flavio that is uh, uh, with us, but uh, you have to show again uh, the stuff that you have on your neck. Yeah, I mean, this was a present from Georgian for Christmas in 2000, 2000, 2000, yes, and he gave this to me saying that it's, everyone make mistake, but uh, the important thing is to fix it. So it's with me since 2000. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's very important for me. Very cool. And yeah. uh, now we have also with us uh, the former world uh, champion, is two-time world champion of uh, the Melges uh, 24 class, Flavio Favini. Flavio, welcome uh, with us here on the Melges 24 rock party. Flavio? I had a little bit of a technical problem, but now I'm... I'm... <laughs> Flavio, <laughs> you look more like Lord Fenner. Than... 
Maybe it's the light. Eh? Yeah, yeah, now it's fine. Now it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, Flavio. How are you? Good, how are you? Great Very to good. see you guys. Yeah, Great good to see you. Guys, guys, you have to stop calling him Flavio. His real name is Giacca Lustra. Giacca Lustra. Giacca Lustra. It's difficult to explain. Yeah, no, it's easy. It's like shiny jacket. <laughs> okay, because he's such a gentleman. So if you want to call him, let's call Jack Alustra, please. <laughs> Mike, I will send you a text so you can you can read it, okay? I think we should have renamed this the uh, instead of the Melgis Rocks party, the uh, Federico Comedy Hour. <laughs> All right. uh, guys, you have to know that Fred, that Fred provided uh, to me a great uh, performance during some uh, Melges Virtual Regatta, and uh, it was almost out of control. So we hope to have the same performance tonight. He's a no, show for me. Mauro, I was drunk. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Flavio, you are uh, the last that uh, went inside of our chat. We have uh, a great bunch of. Uh, uh, sailing a uh, rock star, you are one uh, of them, and uh, I'm showing some picture coming from uh, Blue Moon. Blue Moon uh, has one of the most uh, important history inside of the Melgis 24 class, and uh, it was uh, uh, all everything was based on the great passion of uh, uh, Franco Rossini. So, right. what, what can you explain to us about the link between uh, Franco Rossini and the Melgis 24 class? Uh, you know, uh, Blue Moon uh, was a very lucky situation for all of us because it was, uh, we, we started with uh, sailing with Franco with uh, other boats. He used to own uh, uh, first uh, Surprise, then uh, uh, UFO. Kind of uh, UFO 28 is a uh, one design class uh, quite popular in Italy in the 90s. And then we, we said, why don't we try something more interesting uh, to do some international uh, competition? And so we, we went for the Melgas and we kept going for 15 years. And it was great because Franco was very passionate at that. And uh, it was a bunch of friends. It was mainly a bunch of friends uh, sailing together. So we've been lucky there. Mm -hmm. Among them, uh, for sure, you had some great memories that is uh, linking you with Mr. Tiziano Nava. Tiziano, are you with us? Yes, uh, I am. You so are also in the picture, right? As you can yeah. see. Unfortunately, uh, you showed me the, the first picture of a Blue Moon in San Francisco 2013, uh, when we lost the championship. Eh? <laughs> was, uh, because uh, our tactician on the stern uh, sit on the stern with the leg outside. Uh, and right. For this reason, uh, we, we, <laughs> we have a penalty. And in this run, uh, we have to do the 360. So we lost the championship for one uh, point on the full quarter. Come on, uh, come on, Tiziano, don't be polemic. Come on, you have to no, go. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't remember this. <laughs> Unfortunately, but uh, I think that uh, Brian Portland uh, uh, win, uh, win the championship with a very good uh, week, so. I'm not polemic. Unfortunately, it's, uh, the first uh, picture uh, is uh, in San Francisco. <laughs> but as you know, guys, it uh, is impossible to talk about the Melges 24 if uh, we have uh, no Melges guys. And uh, so they are really well represented here with us tonight because we have Harry Melges III. Harry, hi. And uh, what can you tell to us about the born of the of the Melgis 24 and uh, the first regatta that you made on board uh, of the Melgis 24. Hey Mauro, well the first regatta was probably back in 1993. I think it was out in Annapolis. And there's a pretty good story from that regatta. I'm not sure if I should tell it or not, but it was a very cold, rainy, wet regatta. And uh, you know, it was a pretty decent fleet. First regatta ever, I think. Maybe it was even a national championship. 
And uh, yeah, from there, the class kind of uh, took off in a pretty fast way. And the next year we had a lot of good regattas, but I would like to follow up on Federico's story from La Rochelle because that was also a really special event for me. And uh, I was down with the full throttle guys with John and Brian Porter and Andy Burdick. And, you know, with those guys, the biggest priority is where you're going to have dinner every night. So it's pretty key to find a really good restaurant. And Andre's was the restaurant that we thought was the best restaurant in La Rochelle. So we ate there pretty much every night, eating huge big lobsters and big plates full of palm frites. And uh, we became really good friends with Andre and he started to come out and watch racing during the day. And he had this beautiful old wood launch that he would come out with a couple of his uh, employees and champagne and all this great food and kind of flaunt it in front of us between races. And it made us want to just go back more every night. So. The one team that we saw there almost every night was Giorgio and Federico's team. And, you know, we would pass drinks back and forth and uh, we had a lot of fun there. Fred, I don't know if you have that picture that you can put up. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking on that. Uh, not that one. Eric, if you have to, to choose one reason that made the Melgus 24 so great, so unique in the history of sailing. Well, I mean, the boat itself is just such a fun boat to sail. I think it really set itself up ahead of uh, so many other boats in terms of the design and the performance. Uh, you know, it's pretty much ahead of its time. And when you look at all the boats and the way they sail these days, you know, it's how the Melgus 24 started out. Now you look at boats, even up through maxi boats that are pretty much sailing the same way downwind. You know, it's so much fun to sail that way. And all the great people that have been in the class through the years. It, it's really a special, special class with a lot of special people. How it happens that uh, Fred Michetti became Fred Michetti for uh, Melgus Performance Sailboat? Say that again, Mauro? How it happens, Harry, that uh, Fred Michetti went inside uh, of the Melgus Performance Sailboat uh, business and uh, inside of uh, the Melgus uh, family. Well, we became really good friends after La Rochelle. Um, like Fred said, we had that great battle on the water. I just remember the day before the last day, it was pretty light wind looking over at uh, Giorgio going up wind with his legs crossed like it was just another day out on the water. But, you know, he was so relaxed and so confident. It was just so cool to watch him. And then the last day when we were match racing, he was just laughing the whole time. Like he already knew he was gonna win. And of course, you know, we went off the starting line about even and he just smoked us on the beat. And those guys won both races that day, which was pretty cool. And then, you know, obviously from then on we were really good friends with Federico. We're like brothers basically now. Uh, so we spent a lot of time sailing together and working together, having fun together. Right, Fred? Fred, Absolutely. how many, how many times you had to fight in the water against uh, Harry? Unfortunately, a lot. And then and then I start, I start fighting with him on board. <laughs> <So> <laughs> no, it's a, I'm joking. It's, has been an honor and is an honor for me to be a friend with Harry and Andy. And I love, I mean, I still watch the picture behind Harry and Zenda. Uh, the house of Zenda is some is a unique, special place where I really hope that every Melges sailor can be there one day because it's special. It's so full of history of sailing and Melges is, is, is the best. So it's been, it's been fun, but I mean, Harry is a, it's an amazing talent and the skill of him sailing down when I remember, I still remember for Giorgio was a nightmare sailing against them. And Harry, Giorgio was, uh, was so happy that day just for one reason, because I, I'm quite sure that he know that his life was very close to a hand. And I, I mean, he enjoyed so much that day because it was making him alive. So we, we all need to be proud to to, to, to watch him doing what he did. 
Well, yeah, and, uh, Giorgio was a big inspiration to me. I think he inspired me to start steering my own boat, which yeah. led to our world championship two years later. But uh, at this awards ceremony, he called our whole team up there when he was getting, uh, when you guys were all getting your awards. And I remember him giving me this watch, which is a watch that he won for the regatta, which was pretty special for me to, to get that. But uh, this regatta was also special because nine months later, we, uh, uh, or my wife gave birth to our son. So we had a lot of fun at that regard. <laughs> And here we have the picture of the prize giving. Uh, Fred, you are not so different today from uh, the moment of this uh, prize giving. Eh? It seems that no, you have more hair now, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> My hair is no longer and I have many more headaches. So I, I, I wish to be back in these days. <laughs> <laughs> Zingara, lucky dog. Quantum Racing, uh, Rosebud, and Satisfaction. And we are talking about uh, the sailing career in uh, the Melgas 24 class of Scott Nixon. So Scott, uh, some memory from you regarding uh, your uh, uh, duty in the Melgas 24 class. Yeah, it was funny when, uh, when Harry just showed that picture of, I think it was the first regatta in the US was uh, here in Annapolis. And this is uh, cold, kind of rainy, maybe even snowy regatta and uh, I think I was sailing with Mark Reynolds and uh, he was from San Diego and I remember sailing up wind and it was sleeting and I looked down and he has no shoes no socks on so it uh, it was definitely a cast of characters but you know growing up on the east coast here a lot of guys sailed J boats and looking around and when I first saw the Melvis 24 ripping down wind doing you know 20 knots I was like I knew that the boat that was the boat to get in and uh, following Harry and John Kostecki Chris Larson, Terry Hutchinson, all the guys that came to the class, Federico, really fun to, uh, to, to follow there in their footsteps. I mean, amazing, amazing people. Looking in uh, your sailing career, uh, it seems that you are sailing inside of the class, starting from uh, uh, really, really far away, but you had uh, first uh, uh, success in the class, uh, if uh, I'm not wrong, in 2008. Uh, in Annapolis, in the North American Championship, sailing on uh, Rosebud uh, Quantum Racing, USA 751. And uh, so, go inside with some uh, memory of uh, this uh, success. Yeah, 2008 was, uh, I think, the North Americans, uh, again, here in Annapolis. And that was the year before the 2009 Worlds to be held here. And uh, Terry and I somehow scraped money together and uh, sent it off to Harry and, and bought our first boat. But uh, yeah, we bought 751 brand new and it was a really uh, special time for me. Uh, developed some great bonds and friends. We had uh, Brian Janey on the bow, George Pete Trimmon and Amy Arnmonger as our floater. And uh, it was really fun. I mean, I think we all took a beating, learned a lot from Terry. Um, you know, he got to drive all the big events. And then uh, when he was off doing cup races, I got to drive the boat and all the, uh, the US stuff. So a lot of fun, good regatta. Um, back in the day there it was when all the sailmakers were in the class, all the top pros. I think we had probably 20 awesome boats that could have won that regard in Annapolis and we ended up having a good good last day and ended up winning it, but uh, it was fun, a lot of fun. There is some uh, link between uh, your story and the story of Mike Buckley because you were sailing on uh, Lucky Dock uh, and uh, also Mike Buckley uh, was on uh, Ease and was on Lucky Dog and also on uh, Monsoon. Uh, but now Mike is also inside of the America's Cup. But Mike, uh, you went three times on the podium of the Worlds. And uh, what about your story inside of uh, the Magus 24 class? Uh, yeah, well, I was just I was just googling the first time I ever sailed at Melgus 24, and it was actually with Flipper Wareheim uh, at the Melgus Worlds in Key Largo in 2005, uh, which seems like forever ago. Um, but uh, we we got our butts kicked there. Uh, I was really inexperienced, but eager to learn and, and go fast, and and that was kind of my first. Uh, experience sailing on a really cool boat and, and got me hooked. And, um, you know, then I linked up with, with Bruce Ayers, uh, a number of years later, but probably, I don't know, eight years later. And, uh, we've been, we've been sailing out around the world ever since and been really lucky to meet some incredible people. And, and it's funny, a lot of the people on this, on this video overlap, uh, on some level, uh, you know, that photo beforehand of, of 
Nixon and, and Terry and, and George Pete who sails with us on monsoon. And I do a lot of sailing with, you know, kind of on any boat I sail on. Um, so it's, uh, you know, you, you, you develop a, uh, brotherhood or brother sister relationship with the people you sail with and and you know you go all over the world and we've, we've had some great success on monsoon and and a little bit that i sit when i sailed on lucky dog we you know we, we won the north americans last year which was awesome um but it's really you know we, we've come up a little short the last couple of years um you know this year uh we dragged federico around the race course um and uh you know, we, we had a blast. Uh, it's probably mo the most memorable regatta that I've ever done, actually. Um, and uh, we, we were up by a point going into the last race, and they went left. We went middle. The other boat went right, and the boat that went left won. And, uh, but it was, it was still awesome, and, and the dinners were amazing, and the, the people in the competition are just uh, second to none. Like Harry said, the big boats, they all, they all emulate the 24. It was way ahead of its time. And uh, going uh, with uh, the guy that is having the birthday today, I'm talking about uh, Tonu Toniste. Tonu. Uh... Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. Tonu, you are one of uh, the specialists of the class, uh, the class among the Corinthian crew. You are sailing all the time uh, along with uh, the same crew, almost the same crew, and along with your uh, brother. And uh, you went to time on the top of the podium of uh, the Corinthian words. What about your uh, story in uh, the Melgas uh, 24 class? Actually, hello, everybody. And uh, actually, our story began in 1997. Then we, two uh, brothers, uh, Havels, bought the Melges and asked uh, us to come to sail with them. And then we sailed three years, some regattas with Melges 24. At the same time, we sailed 470 as well. And we tried these Olympic Games. And actually, uh, our first success was in 1997 in Punta Ala European Championship. Then we were in uh, third place. So we, we were quite OK. But in this time, we were active sailing uh, Olympic uh, boat as well. This way, maybe we were quite good in Melges as well. But uh, then we, after Sydney, we make a uh, break uh, for some years. And uh, 2006, uh, we thought that the European Championship, well, it was Worlds, a world uh, in uh, this is a year in uh, France. And uh, uh, when we sailed 470, we liked this place uh, very much. And after uh, we stopped in, after Sydney sailing, uh, then we thought we never come back to year. But now we thought oh, it's good time to but uh, to buy the measures and go to the worlds the year and uh, and since uh, since we are sailing uh, till now every year we try to sail uh, worlds so European championship championship it depends uh, which is in Europe or or, or not what is in, in Europe uh, worlds or European championship and uh, yeah, mostly we have the same team yeah some guys are sometimes changing but uh, still we try so we are the same team all the time but uh, uh, I was uh, following the class uh, starting from 2009 and I remember really well you jumping on the top of the podium in uh, middle fart what do you remember about uh, the middle fart event Tonu? Uh, I remember it was a good success and uh, sixth place all together we were very happy it was our best place in worlds and uh, and uh, of course, uh, when we won the Corinthian Championship as well, but the last day was still no wind and it was, uh, we were waiting on the harbor and uh, of course we had a bit of nervous because uh, yeah, on the one side you want to sail uh, the last race, but on the other hand, uh, when you are leading, uh, you are a little bit afraid, uh, but uh, yes, uh, it was I remember, no, no race in the last day, I, I remember so. And, and but it seems to me that here on the podium uh, we are missing some uh, blonde girl coming also from Estonia, Piret uh, Salmistu. Uh, as you know, Piret uh, is all the time really, really uh, focused on uh, your uh, sailing race, uh, Tonu. And he's also asking all the time for some really good picture about uh, Lenny. 
So, yes, Pirek, yes. <laughs> what, what about your link uh, between uh, the class and your uh, support to the Lenny's guys? Ah, oh, sure. Obviously, I'm supporting our guys, but I just love the class because I think my story started with the class here in Estonia, like uh, 2006, when first actually Tunu and uh, the you know Melgas, you know guys just invited me to help with some organization of the local regatta, and uh, so it just started. You know, I was. I was helping with the Estonian regattas here, also in Finland, actually. And then it was like seven years later, or actually uh, 2010, we obviously organized the Worlds here in Tallinn. And then uh, three years later, it was Tommy Hagola, who uh, previous or past uh, treasurer, who actually said that, unfortunately, Fiona, who was very long time in this class, uh, she decided to retire and uh, they proposed that maybe you would like to, you know, um, try or uh, so and obviously I didn't think too long. So, uh, yeah, since 2013 or 14, I'm now with the class and it's just amazing bunch of people obviously the boat is great and i'm just enjoying so much to do this job you know and uh thanks to fede michetti we have a uh, uh, a picture that i'm trying to show you because we were talking about that a uh, few minutes ago and uh we go to check if i can show the picture to you it came uh, from really really far away F fred can you explain again something about this picture? No, let's first of all, this picture come from Harry that sent this, this to me in order to send this, this to you. So I think that uh, due to the languages and the ownership of that picture, Harry, please go ahead. Yeah, this is at Andres in La Rochelle. And I believe this is the uh, night before the last day of racing. Both of our teams obviously drinking champagne and toasting to what a great regatta we've all had. You can see Buddy hiding behind the tree there. Uh, my mom is there as well. So, And also Andy Burdick is there, I would say, 20 pounds lighter than today. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, we just, you know, a lot of fun times together through the years. And that's what the class is all about, right? Exactly. I think that is, uh, I mean, one design sailing is the best but the Belgius 24 is the best. But what I think that is very, very cool is the spirit of the Belgius 24 class. I mean, the people that are sailing, the people that are loving the boats. I mean, stay all together is something unique. I, I, I was with Mike and Monsoon in, uh, in Villa Simius. It was like uh, a while that I was not sailing in the Belgius 24 class and I've been shocked on how cool is the class every day. And I think that this is also thanks to Piret and his smile and how nice she is with everyone. So the Magic 24 is the best. That's it. Fred, this is uh, Tallinn. Uh, this is the uh, Piret house and uh, it uh, brings to you for sure uh, new memories and uh, your uh, the time that you were sailing along with uh, Lorenzo Bressani and the Uka Uka team. It was uh, a great, uh, a great team, and uh, what about Uka Uka? I mean, I, let's say, let's switch in another matter later, okay? I just want to explain this. The, the coolest part of this championship was that was basically the most, uh, the most important event for our team and was uh, the relationship between Jonathan and Rufo. Rufo at, the, at this time was not speaking very well. Tallinn was very tricky and guys was so fun to listen these two guys working together basically with no way to, to discuss together or to talk together and it was like delirious. I remember how crazy the conditions were and how impossible it was to communicate on board. We did a very good job there. And here we have Fred Michetti, Fabio Gridelli, Jonathan Mecchi, Lorenzo Santini and uh, Rufo. And uh, maybe not all the guys, especially in the foreign countries, know that Rufo means uh, the really light puff of wind. Uh, coming from the Italian word, that means refolo. And the refolo is the really, really light puff of wind. And so in Trieste, it became Rufo. And... Uh, 
how many times uh, you went in, in on the top of the podium uh, of the world along with uh, Lorenzo Bressani? Three times. Lorenzo is a great friend. Is an unbelievable sailor, an amazing talent. Uh, I, I still remember the sound of all the cleats working on the same time, hiking for him. I mean, it was like click, clack, click, clack. I mean, it was impossible to, to manage it, how the guy was able to do all these adjustments in a second. So, Rufo, I hope that you are there and he's a great friend and an amazing sailor. And, and it was a great battle with the Blue Moon uh, for many years. It was was very something unique. Going to Blue Moon, uh, Blue Moon uh, had on board, uh, as we have uh, discovered before, uh, Franco Rossini, and Franco Rossini was uh, pushing a lot while uh, he was doing hiking, Flavio. Yes, de definitely. Franco, Franco is so passionate, and he really, when, when he came sailing, he, he was really pushing, like you can imagine. Plus, it was also... He was also the heaviest guy uh, on board, so he was the most important one. But uh, when, he, when he had enough of hiking, he jumped off the boat instead of staying on board and not, uh, not hiking enough. He preferred to, to buy himself a power boat and become uh, a go in the coaching stuff. <laughs> Flavio, you are one of the uh, most experienced Italian Please. men. Giacca Lustra. Giacca Lustra. <laughs> Come on. Giacca, Giacca Lustra, Giacca. you are one of the most uh, experienced Italian handsmen. You went, uh, you, uh, went inside of the America's Cup and uh, you spent a lot of years sailing in the Melgas 24 class with uh, one of the top team, uh, as we have explained, the name was Blue Moon. But uh, you uh, won the world for the first time in 2001 then in 2014. So it means that the level of the class was really, really high. What about your, uh, uh, the, the most important battle that you had uh, on the race courses? Uh, if you have to choose one of your uh, most impressive opponents. Well, first of all, if we won the first one in 2001 and the second one in 2014, it means we lost a lot. <laughs> We, lo we lost many times, <laughs> especially from uh, Uka Uka, who was, at the, it was such a tough competitor. We had, as, uh, as Freddy was saying, we had such a good uh, competition with them. Uh, unfortunately, they kept beating us at the words, but uh, sometimes we made to go close. And, uh, and the other big competitor is here. Is, uh, is Ari. <laughs> we had a great, uh, very good uh, competition with Ari so many times. All the times that he tried stealing the boat, he came immediately, went up to the top of the, uh, of the fleet. So it was um, such, a, such a good competition with Ari and a uh, honor to sail against him. A uh, few days ago, as you probably know, Flavio, I was in touch with uh, Franco and uh, he told me that he feels himself uh, uh, really, really linked still today with uh, the Melgas uh, 24 class. And uh, you had uh, some, uh, you had relation with uh, really important owners uh, in your sailing history. And uh, uh, what do you think about uh, the idea to have again uh, uh, Franco in the Megas 24 class just as owner uh, on board the RIB, maybe with uh, Tiziano Nava doing coaching? Uh, I, I will ask if they have a place on the RIB for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, it's, uh, you, you know, Fra Franco, as you, as you said before, is, uh, is passionate. So, Great if he decides uh, maybe one day he can decide to go back on uh, to sailing, and that will be great. I mean, I've sailed with a lot of owners, as you say, and uh, the main thing I found out of these people is uh, is passion, is passion. Um, actually, to be honest, more in the past than now, because now with the owner driver, owner driver is a little different because. Uh, Basically, the, I think that we created some monsters. 
But these kind of owners, <laughs> they're, really, they're really sportsmen. But Flavio, looking at this picture, it seems that you were sailing solo in uh, the Melgas 24. That's right. There was but... no, one, no one around. <laughs> I don't know where we are here. Uh, this is, I think that this was uh, was a Neostat. No, actually, this is the key Largo 2005. Uh, 2005. Yeah. 2005. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the picture before. The picture before was 100% uh, Neostat. Neostat. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that, that was a windy one. <laughs> really windy, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Harry, uh, talking about the numbers of uh, the Melges 24 class, how many boats, uh, Melges performance sail boat uh, uh, sold in uh, the history of the class? 865 boats have been built. And uh, as, as I know, still today you are uh, building new boats. We are. We're building, uh, I think we maybe built a half a dozen boats this year. Right now, things are kind of quiet, obviously, but uh, hopefully when things open back up, the class will be on fire again and people will be excited to go sail and race again. Hopefully. hopefully. It's still the modern, coolest boat out there. No way. Look at this picture. Fred. It's time uh, yes. to you to make some question to our guest uh, because uh, for sure you can uh, go inside on some really, really nice memory talking about some particular moment of uh, some uh, sailing race. So up to you. First of all, I would like to ask Mike to stop sending crazy picture of me and blackmailing me to share this uh, with everyone. So Mike, please stop. And you can forward it to me eh, if you want. <laughs> Mike, don't check, do it. Check your email, Mora. <laughs> yeah, you can send it to me to info at uh, zero gradient. Mauro, remember that you still have to come to our regatta this summer if we are going to do some regatta. So up to you, okay? <laughs> no, I, I remember that you are my boss, so I will I will yeah. pay some great attention to it. Eh? No, I'm not. No, <laughs> I I I mean my question is to Harry. Obviously, you were a, a young kid when Buddy built and. And, and create the concept of the 24, that is still again a, a very modern, cool boat. So what was behind that at this day? Actually, it was my brother Hans who came up with the concept. Uh, Buddy and I were out at America Cubed, uh, working out there in the America's Cup program. And Hans was back here in Zenda running the business and trying to sell J-boats. Came up with the idea to build our own boat, and he had all the concept behind it. Buddy and I happened to be with Reichel Pew almost every day because they designed the American Cube boat, and uh, we started talking to those guys about it and what we wanted to do. And they were excited about it, so they started, you know, drawing boats, and we kept refining until uh, what we have today is the Melgas Twenty Four. I mean, guys, if you feel, we all have great memory on this boat, and I mean, it's so actual, it's so fun that if you think how old it is now, it's like 25 years old now. Like, 1992. How old is the Magic 24 now? It's uh, almost uh, 28 years. Yeah. I mean, if you think how modern the boat is today compared other, I mean, again, I don't want to talk about others and one design racing is the best again, but if you think how ahead was this design and this concept is amazing. I mean, Flavio, I think, I'm sure that you can, you can say something about the feeling of driving a Melge 24 downwind in 25 knots. I still remember in Scarlino, you remember the one of the regatta, it was like 2008, the Scarlino event, how windy was the last Sunday and you smashed the fleet. You remember that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I fully agree. Uh, it's, no, it's no, no secret that uh, the Magus 24 is my favorite boat for sure. Uh, it's a great boat. It's light to drive uh, upwind. It's so fast downwind. It's not a difficult boat because uh, you don't have too much to care about rolling on that stuff. You just have to go fast. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's my favorite, for sure.
Tonu, I heard all the time that uh, uh, being a good uh, uh, 470 uh, handsman can really help you to uh, go in uh, helming uh, the Melgus 24. Did you agree with uh, this point of view? Yes, of course. Uh, I think sailing 407, it's uh, quite... But then when you're sailing Melges, it's feel quite the same. Uh, and uh, what I like in Melges is that uh, here it's uh, very... Uh, quite uh, a lot of uh, good uh, sailors and famous sailors all over the world are so sailing this boat. And uh, when we were sailing actively 470, then the same guys uh, like Montefusco and... Uh, Ivaldi and, and uh, a lot of other guys are sailing for his matches boat as well, and so it's very, very fun this way. I think that we are now showing a picture that is uh, uh, that regarding one of your birthday along with your brother. So I think that it happens uh, in Luano, uh, in Luano in Italy, it was, uh, I think, five years ago, maybe, or something. So. Yeah, it, it seems so. But uh, and what about this picture? Do you remember the year? Uh, I think it's uh, maybe 88 or so when we get the Olympic medals uh, in Seoul, uh, in Busan was the Olympic sailing and uh, it's in Estonian uh, news. Uh, today actually was in uh, our news, this picture show and uh, some small uh, uh, questionnaire for people, some 10 questions about us and uh, how the people know, know us. Uh, so. mm -hmm. Mauro, what I think that makes this class special is person like Tonu and Lenny team that are sailing for so many years, traveling all around the world. I mean, I'm sure that Tonu, you are very busy today with your with your business. And I mean, I think that this is what made this class special. Have such a great talent that they cannot stop sailing and they love to be part of this community. Uh, actually, Fred, I was asking to Harry something uh, regarding this. Uh, my question is, uh, it seems that in uh, the last years we had uh, more owner driver involved in the class. Uh, do you think that uh, it can be uh, something good for, uh, for the class or uh, you, were, you are still thinking about the time uh, with uh, Super Pro Helm in the boat? I think it's good that we have more amateurs driving for sure. It uh, definitely helps the longevity of the class. I mean, what happens when you have too many pros driving and sailing the boat? Uh, you know, the level gets so high that you start to drive out the uh, sailors in the back half of the fleet. So it's really important to cater to the amateur drivers and the amateur sailors and make sure they're having fun and learning and enjoying the experience all the time. That's but really Harry, what, what I think that is, is very special of the class is, has, as Flavio said before, sometimes we as pro, we are creating monsters, okay? I mean, people with not so much experience that they can compete and, and win. And I mean, it, it's not fair to call them monsters, but anyway, we, we he explained very well what we're talking about. I mean, I remember that a couple of years ago, we did an AGM and I was pushing very hard the board and few owners on the dock to get the boat a little easier and more affordable to, to, let me say, Corinthian driver. And I was shocked to, to listen that these guys, they are keen to sail against top team. I mean, and this is what I think that make this class special. At the end, I realized that maybe I was wrong and tried to get the boat a little more affordable was a mistake because Major 24 sailor like the challenge. And I think that this is something that make, uh, make the class special. And Laura, uh, thank you very much because I, 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 I read uh, your press release when you announced that the word was cancelled and your word about how, how sailor love challenge and how, how we will become stronger was very impressive. Thank you very much because a few day, every time I'm reading your your message again and make me feel good thank you laura <laughs> quite a compliment i appreciate it i do think the corinthians are the heart of the class i you know i've had pros on my boat but i also like to um i like to drive for better or worse <laughs> Mike, we were showing some picture coming from uh, the Garda Lake. Uh, 
What do you think about uh, the Garda Lake uh, as home for the Melgas 24? I mean, Garda, Garda Lake's a special place to sail. Uh, you know, it's uh, everybody likes going there. And if you've never been there, it's an incredible place to go sail. Really tricky race course. Uh, you know, a lot of the time it's, it's very one-sided. Um, but, uh, you know, it's beautiful sailing surrounded by mountains. And the wind is extremely reliable and uh, great restaurants and uh, not a better hotel in the world than, than staying at the uh, Lido Palace. Um, so I, uh, I love coming there. So uh, you got my vote. You were sailing uh, on Lucky Dock. Uh, this picture is coming from uh, the Europeans in 2018. What about your memories uh, regarding the Europeans? Uh, uh, I remember that I had to manage the prize giving without the mic in, uh, in the middle of the big plaza. And uh, this is uh, something regarding myself. And I, I don't know what about your memory. No, no, but uh, one second. Come back to the picture, please. Can you come back, Mauro? Yes, sir. Uh, which one? This picture? <laughs> No, no, the picture before, in the uh, drop. Which one? Uh, I mean, the picture before. It was a picture of Lucky Dog during the drop in Garda. Uh, the, drop, the drop, this one. No, you have to come back a couple of, up a couple of pictures. I know, uh, because I'm jumping uh, from uh, one picture oh, to the okay, other. It doesn't matter. No, it was... It's probably was your very, internet. It's probably your internet what connection. What Mike is doing on board? Nothing. <laughs> Mike, look that. Everyone busy except him. Look, Mike. Can you please explain us what were you thinking there? <laughs> Come on. Look. Look. Are you looking at Pete? What are you looking for? You know, I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, everybody does their own job, and uh, I was just watching my guys get the kite down, and they they ended up doing a great job, and Everything went perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> so I, I have to tell you that I I was very surprised on my attitude on board during this. Uh, we we spent two weeks together at the work in Villa Simius, and and Mike is a very great is a great buddy. Have a very difficult character, but he's a great guy. <laughs> Very difficult character. <laughs> Char character. Uh, sorry, uh, thank you. You know that my Japanese is not improving at all. <laughs> Well, I, I remember in uh, Villa Simus that uh, Mike was all the time relaxed when I was close uh, to you with uh, with the rib. Uh, it was uh, really nice. It was uh, smiling. He was also pushing on me to have a really good picture of you, Fede. I remember. <laughs> he was asking picture of you. Mauro, remember that in the COVID period, you need to be straight. <laughs> And uh, Tonu, what about your memories uh, to sail uh, the Merges 24 on the Garda? Uh, I'm uh, talking about the Garda because uh, I think that uh, on the Garda Lake, uh, when the wind, uh, when the, the Peler or, or the Ora is blowing uh, fast, uh, you can go sailing down with, with uh, really, really flat uh, water. And so I think that is one of the most uh, uh, nice conditions for the 24. Yes, uh... Before the Merkel sailing, we were sailing with 472 times in Garda and we won all these two regattas this way. We always are very exciting when we come with Melges to sail. But uh, yeah, in the Melges, we have different distance in different places and uh, okay, uh, some rules, but uh, quite often the rules are not, not sure, sure rules. And, uh, but in last years, we are learning more better and better to sail in Garda, and uh, we are quite happy. Uh, happy. And uh, we hope this year uh, we have planned. We bought our flight ticket soon to Austria this in May, and then to regattas in uh, Garda. But uh, I hope in the middle of July we can come to Garda, and in August as well to sail regattas. So we we very hope so that we can come. Uh, as we know, Estonia is not so such a big country as a square meter. But uh, you had you have uh, real, you had and you still have some really good uh, uh, Merges 24 fleet. We are not just talking about uh, Lenny, but we have uh, uh, other owners. So 
Can you explain something more about uh, the Mergus 24 fleet in Estonia? Yes, we have. So uh, we had the five boats and now we have uh, f uh, three or four boats. Uh, it's a little bit depends, but uh, and, uh, good uh, sailor boat. We have some connection problem with Tonu. Tonu laser. We have... Okay. Yeah. Then he said, with laser, we said together with 470 boat uh, quite a long time. Uh, and and he, he is very good sailing, uh, good concurrent for us. And then we have, uh, we have offshore racing is very popular in Estonia. And uh, we have uh, guys from offshore racing they have medals from worlds and European championships and uh, they are sailing uh, as well as this uh, Melzer's boat. So when we finished team, we had quite good connection and regattas in Finland, in Estonia. And I hope it's it's come back a little bit. Uh, it's quite quiet in Finland now, but I hope they began sail more actively. And uh, But we like to travel and uh, some Estonians always uh, like come to some regattas to Europeans or worlds. And so this year as well, I hope. It's Scott. Mauro, Mauro yes. just a yes, second. Yeah. I think because we missed the part of the tunnel sentence, yeah. uh, he was talking about Peter Sarashkin from Suktu boat. So I was just adding this because yeah. I think we lost that part of his sentence. Uh, I was uh, listening not so well, actually. Thank you, Piret. Uh, so, Piret, uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the Estonian, uh, the Estonian class, uh, they are also great with uh, the graphic solution on the boat because uh, I remember some uh, incredible shirts from the guys of uh, Zuku, Zuksu and Yes Sir No Sir and also uh, from uh, Tonu that is sailing all the time with the national uh, flag on the kite. Uh, uh, I think that it could be a great idea to push on the owner to have some uh, special kite like the one of uh, uh, Tonu. What do you think about that, Piret? <clears throat> yeah, about the guides, you know, uh, as to our photographer, Pierre Ricon team, he's always saying that, you know, the white guides uh, shall be uh, um, not uh, allowed because it's much better to have, you know, some colored guides because especially like this uh, Lenny kite, it is so well recognizable and uh, all the rest which are colored are are also better to uh, to understand which boat it is. And uh, if you are just white kite, I totally agree that these kind of kites are very funny and uh, easy to follow. Scott, what about uh, your uh, uh, story of uh, sailing battle against uh, Mr. Federico Michetti? Do you remember something special? Uh, too many battles with him. I uh, I don't think we've ever beaten him at a Worlds. Uh, I think we beat him maybe at a pre-Worlds in San Francisco, but uh, not at a Worlds. He uh, he's amazing. I mean, he's he's one of Melgis Worlds, and I think all the Melgis classes. So he set the bar really high, and it's always fun to sail against him. I consider him a good friend, and a, he's a great guy. I've learned a lot from him. I'd, I'd love to sail with him one day. Who knows, Freddie? We'll see. I hope. I hope soon. Don't, so let that, the don't let that go to your head, Frederico. <laughs> Sorry? I said, don't let that go to your head. I mean, let's not give him too many more compliments. No, exactly. Too many, and this looks like more the Federico's night, and it's not. Harry, the best three tips for sailing downwind uh, the Major 24 in 12 knots. The best three teams? Tips, tips, suggestions. Oh, tips. Tips. In 12 knots. Yeah. Um, angle of heel is key. And then, uh, obviously weight placement because 12 knots, you're probably just on the step, maybe not fully on the step. So four and a half weight placement is pretty key. And then, uh, main and bank tension is really key. Cause that might be a lazy low plane mode in 12 knots. If the water's flat, if it's bumpy then you're pressed up and main in and work. So how, how you will adjust your van and your traveler on that? In this traveler, I would, it, in that, I would just leave the traveler centered. And, uh, you know, if it's a lower lazy plane mode, then you got to have a little more bang on. If you're sailing hotter uh, with the main in more, then you have the bang looser, if not all the way off. Depends how windy it is and how big the waves are. And Flavio? The best three tips in 25 knots upwind? 
<laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on to the boat. <laughs> Wear your life jacket. <laughs> All right, come on. Yeah, I, I think that a good tip is that uh, uh, you have to have a very light feel, a, a, a bit of a feel, a bit of a weather helm, but quite light on the helm. Because otherwise, uh, if you have too much helm, you go slow. So I think that uh, the helm tells you a lot on this boat, like on every boat, but particularly on the on the Mergus 24. I think that you have to feel the boat going by yourself. So Flavio, we are in Villa Simius, 23 knots, last start, tie points with Mike on Monsoon and Harry on Star. Which tuning you will choose? 23 knots and few waves. Tuning? Yeah, mass tuning. Oh, you, you tell me, you tell me. I think you have to go as you, as tight as you can without breaking. <laughs> we, lo we learned that, huh? we learned that. Yeah. Federico, I got a question for you. I, have to, I think you have to be brave and go a couple of turns more, if anything. But Fetty, all, all the all the great teams you've won world championships with, you've you've sailed with a lot of people. You have to put a five person all star team together. Who 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 are the five crew? It's I mean too many it's people tough. in this too many it's people tough. in you this. Gotta, you gotta, you, you, gotta <laughs> you have to answer the question. I don't know. It's too complicated. But uh, for me, it's not complicated to go showing one picture that I got uh, from uh, Mike Buckley. He sent me an email and uh, this is the picture that we have. Oh. <laughs> I cannot see the picture. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's your retirement picture. Yeah, definitely my favorite car. <laughs> Uh, I, I remember something, something like this in uh, in uh, Villa Simius. I remember that I was shooting uh, you uh, during the night time uh, down to my hotel on a roundabout, and I was sending to you also the picture at night time, uh, telling you that uh, I spotted you on uh, Villa Simius. Uh, uh, but your car is white, if I remember well, Fred. Yes, exactly, it's white. <laughs> Can we switch back to sailing, please? That I think that is more interesting. <laughs> Ma Marco, oh, oh, Mauro, only me sail uh, in the boat on the picture, eh? <laughs> <laughs> only me. <laughs> Nobody on this. <laughs> so, Tiziano, going back in, uh, in the, the question that I made to Flavio, you sail a lot as a tactician in the Major 24. And then uh, I remember the last few seasons uh, as a coach uh, of Flavio on Blue Moon. On, uh, sorry, Blue Moon. Uh, what is the biggest difference between a, a very well-tuned team sailing upwind in Big Breeze? What are the biggest difference? Uh, for, for sure, I think that, uh, uh, that we, you, we use, uh, uh, use a Vang on the, on the strong wind. In upwind, and uh, I think that uh, it's very important to, uh, how Flavio said, to have a, a, a very light uh, helm, and uh, and uh, I think the jib lead uh, uh, with the the, um, uh, the leech very open, but. Uh, depend of the of the waves, but uh, we use a lot of anger. Uh, I, I don't remember how, how we turn uh, the, the shroud, uh, but uh, uh, on the Melgas uh, you continue to trim uh, the shrouds. So, so uh, it's important to understand uh, how we uh, how is the your uh, your speed uh, against the other, and uh, change immediately if you have uh, some problems. Okay. So, Mike Scott. You are the guy that in this uh, chat are sailing more with the Corinthian driver. Let's start from uh, Scott now. What, I mean, and you say quite successfully in this class with the Corinthian driver, what are your tips and what are your strategy 
in order to help them to sail against the best driver in the world. Scott. Well, thanks, uh, Freddy. It's, it's really fun to sail with the uh, amateurs and Corinthian helmsmen, and that's kind of mostly what I do. But, uh, you know, the key really to compete against, you know, the good guys, the Favios, the Harrys of the world is just time on the water. So, you know, whatever you can do to spend time getting on the water and practicing really pays off. And these guys uh, are busy running companies and working uh, all over the place. So anytime you can get them on the water, um, it really pays off at the event. So they have a little more preparation. So just time on the water is really key. It's fun to see these guys who do put in the work, uh, you know, pay off and win events. Really fun. I mean, Mike was uh, Villa Simius was my first. Uh, okay, I I, I say with uh, with uh, Brian Porter, but uh, he's a very is a is an amazing sailor and with a ton of experience in the class. But I was very impressed, Mike, on your skill and your attitude with uh, with Bruce and with the Monsoon team during the two weeks uh, before Villa Simius. I was very I was scared at the beginning because again it was my first experience with a real amateur driver and and was a big championship and we spent a lot of days in the water that is not uh, something familiar to me so what uh, I mean what is your main goal when you are approaching a campaign like that sailing especially when you are sailing and you are there competing to win against the top driver yeah, I mean, I, I, I try to uh, I try to build the, the owner's confidence the whole time um, and, and really take that aspect out. Uh, you know, our competitors are just another boat, um, not not a not a big name. You know, I, I, I don't I wouldn't talk about Flavio with them. I would I would just it's just another boat, boat number 850 or whatever their boat number is uh, to kind of help with the with the you know, mental side of it and really just focus on keep it simple. Start in the middle. I mean, you can, you can, uh, you know, if you think about our starts, we never started at an end. Um, kind of not put, not put the owner in a, in a tough situation where they're going to start to lose their confidence. Uh, put them in a situation where their confidence is going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, you know, and that, that's not easy because I'm, I'm a pain in the ass to sail with. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a balancing act, but it's all about time on the water, like Scott said, and then just confidence um, and not not thinking about who those other great sailors are. Because there's in this class, there's there's so many great sailors, uh, Olympic medalists and, and, you know, top pros and, and this, that and the other. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I going back to what we talked about earlier with Harry and, and you were chatting about pros versus no pros. I don't think there's a perfect answer to what the future holds, but um, I know guys like Bruce and Brian Porter love going against guys like Flavio. Um, you know, that's, that's why they do it. Um, and knowing you've got a shot to go out and, and beat the best um, is pretty cool. That's, that's what I like about the class as well. Yeah. So Tonu, you have been a rock star in the 470 class. Then you have been very busy with your business and then, you start this 24 career. What is your feeling when, when you are approaching a start and you find in the middle of a, 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 a duel between Flavio or uh, Fracasoli or, I mean, top sailor? What did you feel? Uh, actually, we like very much to sail uh, against the uh, top uh, teams, and but uh, yeah, we. We are mostly sailing only regattas, so we have no time or yeah, not, not we train not very much this way. Always on the end we know well, mostly a little bit better. Uh, we, we have always the best place in the world, uh, the six or eight or we are in this level and we are quite happy with this. But, but uh, yeah, with uh, tacticians and with uh, this is a little bit uh, speed and everything a little bit better and uh, they are and so on then always some professional teams are before us but we still don't lose hope uh, we we want to yeah get in the top three best uh, some, sometimes somewhere hey, Laura how are how are your feeling when you are sailing in the major 24 what did you feel Usually, um, 
I'm working on the confidence. <laughs> that is uh, definitely uh, both of those comments about confidence and time in the water um, are certainly there. I do have to admit that when we're starting, if I see, oh, I don't know, someone like Monsoon coming near me to Lourdes, I, I'm not really very happy about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, I, I think all the comments are great. And I really think that we need everybody, the pros and the Corinthians, um, to make the class be successful. I was, again, as I say, I been out of the class for a couple of years and I was very impressed on the great feeling in Villa Seniors. It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. I, I, yeah. we, had, we had a great time. I mean, and we had wind from every different direction and different sea state. So, you know, you learn one thing one day and we're unable to apply it the next day. So it's perfect, you know? Yeah. It's very much more interesting. How are these? for a Corinthian to drive a boat, organize the team and following all the organizational stuff. Because I mean, what I'm very proud is about the Major 24 class on how passionate all these members are and how great your work is to get everything rolling. So it must be hard. I, for us, it's a team effort. Um, my husband handles all the logistics for the boat. Um, our Bow guy who's a Corinthian is, is very meticulous and loves to, you know, go through and check that every little thing is, is just the way it should be. So, um, you know, we, I couldn't do it with, without the group and the team that we have and everybody kind of pitching in and helping out. And I think it's that way for a lot of the other Corinthian teams as well. And you, you build really strong friendships. Mauro, are you there or? Uh, yes, you I was trying. I, I was <laughs> taking my time trying to invite in the conversation also Pierre Conten that is following us uh, in uh, during our uh, live. So uh, he was uh, handling the situation really, really well, and I was uh, trying to have also Pierre uh, with us. And uh, Flavio, going inside of the 2001 uh, words. What do you remember about uh, the 2001? Very good memory because uh, for us uh, that was such a such a good week. Uh, we honestly we were not expecting to to win the the regatta, but uh, say we, we we would have been very happy with the top five. Uh, Top five, top, top something uh, position. Instead, we found ourselves very fast. <laughs> Actually, Harry uh, gave us a very good boat there. Uh, I remember jumping on the boat and feeling uh, unexpectedly fast compared to the others. And uh, plus, uh, plus. Uh, Tiziano sent me always in the right place. And that was a very good, uh, it's our sport. I mean, uh, sometimes you have the good week and everything comes easier. Uh, maybe the next week uh, is not the same, but that was a very, was, a, was actually a very good fleet because uh, Key West, a beautiful place. But we, we really miss it now. And uh, such a good fleet. Yeah, amazing week. That was a very good one. One of my best. Uh, one of the best of my career. Wait a minute, because Fred uh, is uh, trying uh, to fall down from the chair, and uh, uh, <laughs> he was covering you with uh, the noise. Uh, but uh, at the end, we have understand uh, almost everything about uh, your explanation. And uh, I'm looking inside of the crew list, and I'm looking at the name of Serena Chima that uh, was sailing with you. And uh, today she is the wife of uh, Daniele Cassinari, the CEO of uh, North Sales in Italy. So uh, it was a uh, time ago, 19 years. Uh, time, time runs fast, yes.
We had a very good trip. Uh, Serena was sailing with us. Uh, she has been sailing with us for several seasons. With Franco, Franco, and, uh, and Alberto, on the doctor. Alberto Prestinoni. The doctor. The yeah, doctor. Mauro, even, I mean, I remember Daniele Cassinari on Alina with the Luca Valerio driving. I mean, an amazing team again. Flavio, do you remember how tough we were training against them? Yeah, very tough competitors. Very tough competitors in, that, in those times, yeah. I think he came, they, they might have done second place in Edwards some, sometime. I mean, I don't know if Daniele is in line, but for sure Alina was the boat with the best score for the first half of the championship. And they finished second, I think, few times. For yeah. sure, was the Mastrand. The Mastrand World. They yeah. finished second when uh, Seb win the world. Sebastian Kohl. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Right. No, no, that was a top team, absolutely. Such a tough competitor. It was uh, to have Luca Valerio and Daniele Casinari back in the fleet. But yeah. at the end, Luca Valerio was retiring from uh, from sailing due to some uh, back pain, if I remember well. But maybe yeah. today he can return uh, inside of the game. Also, some uh, master, uh, some uh, team made of masters of sailing uh, as uh, Flavio Favini, Luca Valerio. Bye, <laughs> So, Fred, uh, what about uh, the future of the class? What do you think uh, uh, that it will happen in uh, the Melges 24 class in the upcoming years? First of all, I really hope that the Melges 24 will happen in Miami. I really hope that, and I keep my finger crossed. And I see a brilliant future because, again, it's a futuristic boat, it's very fun, and it's full of great people. So, I think that the future is brilliant. and. The class in the last year has been managed very well. We got our moments, but I think that I, I, I saw a great class in, in Villa Simeos. And again, Piret, and uh, I mean, they, they are doing such an amazing job and they care so much that is uh, something special. Piret, thank you very much. Thank you, Fede. And also, Jens. My uh, Jens, he did an amazing job. I mean, the class was. Uh, in the past was not in a very good looking mode and has been hard working and uh, we the class went through some difficult challenge but uh, the boat is beautiful the sailors that are sailing the boat are great so i think that we are all in good shape mike what about your idea regarding sorry mora could you repeat it it kind of faded it cut out on us uh and uh, what about your idea regarding the future of the class? What do you hope for, for the future of the Megas 24? Well, I think, you know, I think we've had a, a lot of momentum the last few years. Uh, you know, on Monsoon we did, I think we've done the last four or five worlds, Miami, uh, Van, uh, British Columbia, Finland, and Italy. And, you know, they were some of the most memorable events of our you know, of my life. Um, so I, I think the class is, is doing a great job. And, um, you know, I hope that, that we can put on a great event here in, in the U.S. in Miami. And because uh, like Federico said, Villa Simia was was really special, um, you know, but I think it, it takes people lending a hand, you know, uh, there's no perfect answer to build a class and, and there's no perfect answer of what a great event is. But, you know, we need people kind of off the sideline and, and come in and help and lend a hand and you know uh especially considering the circumstances of, of what the world has gone through these last few months and continues to go through um i hope that you know miami you know will be an event that everybody comes to and and i know we're all sick of being inside uh and you know there's been a lot of sadness in the world and hopefully we can use our sport to come together and, and have a hell of an event in Miami. I know the, I know the Europeans love coming to Miami, um, but uh, yeah. 
but for sure it could be the rebirth of uh, sailing under the new rules that we will have for uh, due to the covid uh, emergency tonu i am almost sure that uh, you will continue your commitment inside of the class sure sure but uh, still for everybody it's quite difficult times you know what's happened in the future and uh, how the competitions are coming maybe in some countries uh, finished with this uh, virus uh, virus when the other country is not finished and then when somebody said that uh, we have problem then this country go to the, to the regatta because we are afraid and uh, but but i hope still that uh, it's in summer is finished and it's finished at all and then uh, normal life comes back uh, but uh, a little bit afraid uh, okay. yeah but tonu look look at mike i mean i think that mike is a great uh, example he just got the covid he spent i i'm in touch with him since uh, a little while and he got the covid he got the virus and has been too hard week but now he's look he's look good i mean look good is a big word for it's him better but than before yeah but Mike, can you say something to that? Uh, I mean, well, yeah. I, I, so I, I have been really sick, uh, um, and 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 my family got it as well. My wife and our newborn. Um, thank God they they only got it uh, very mildly, um, you know. And and you know, uh, also I don't know if you've read the news about Richard Reed. Uh, you know, he he went through a hell of a battle work worse than I, worse than myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that again, there's no right answer, Federico. There's, you know, we're, we're in uncharted territory. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, we can stay inside for the rest of our lives or we can get back to doing what we love and there'll probably have to be some, some changes made and some, some, you know, the way we travel will probably be a little bit different, but, um, it's just like updating your tuning guide, you know, or updating your tactical plan. Um, we we just get, we're gonna have to figure it out. Cause that's that's really the only option. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, Harry, uh, we I was asking about the future of the class, but uh, for you, I have another question. And uh, what do you think that uh, uh, Melga's performance sailboat can do? to support all the time uh, the uh, activity of the class and uh, to uh, be the Melgas 24 uh, uh, as much new as uh, you can. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is to always support the regattas with uh, personnel and a service vehicle wherever possible. Uh, I do think it'll be good to get another builder in Europe uh, sooner than later to help uh, freshen up the European fleet, so to speak. I think that uh, will be good and we'll get some used boats out there and available for more people to buy and come into the class as well. So we just need to keep promoting and keep all the sailors promoting and talking it up with their friends and having fun with it. What do you think about the class organization? Uh, uh, how it works? Are you satisfied about uh, uh, the instrument that the class has to bring forward uh, the job? And uh, so what about your feeling? Yeah, I think the class has been very well run through the years and uh, the structure seems to be uh, very good and functioning properly and Perrette's doing a great job. So we're happy. I can definitely, guys, I can definitely, guys, add that we have a great executive committee and also technical committee, and obviously our media team. So I think this is a team effort uh, from everybody. And I think uh, now we just announced that we have a new technical committee chair, Mike Gozar from uh, Canada, and we have a new measurer, Franko Parunov from Slovenia. And uh, they are all very active in the class. They have been in the class, they are still, and uh, I think it's a great effort from them and uh, from the executives as well. So especially now when we, uh, when we can't be together, we have so many meetings you know, lately that it makes also my work easier in a way. So it's, uh, you mm -hmm. know, there are good and bad you know, in every situation, but I think that we are doing a good job, I think. 
Piret, uh, we were talking about the idea to have the words in Miami, and uh, we had some statement from Laura a few times ago. All the people are really focusing on the idea to go sailing in Miami. But one of uh, the main event that uh, is planned to have before uh, Miami, it could be the European in uh, Slovenia, in Portros, uh, the home of uh, Branko Parunov. Can you explain something to us about the uh, state of the art that we have right now regarding the idea to have the event uh, in the upcoming uh, October or September. Yeah, L Laura can do that as well because already this week we have had two meetings uh, regarding the Europeans and uh, other things as well. So just on Monday we had the meeting with the Europeans organizers, Branko and the others, and also uh, with our executives and Obviously, this is not really in our hands because we are depending on the situations, what uh, what uh, countries and the governments are deciding. So traveling might be really challenged this summer. Obviously, we are very hopeful that in September we can have the, the Europeans in Slovenia. Uh, at the same time, we can't imagine or predict how many boats we can get there. Uh, at the same time, hearing Tuno speaking that they are very anxious to go to Riva, obviously we all are. So, uh, so we are hopeful for uh, for Slovenia. However, nothing is sure. Not, nothing is sure, to certain. But for Miami, uh, yeah, hard to tell. We all have the fingers crossed to know for uh, to get back to sailing and uh, yeah, yeah. We don't care. Dream is for free. We dream is for free. Let's keep dreaming and who cares what the future will bring. I do agree, Feda, for sure. We are all dreaming uh, and uh, yeah, we just can't wait to be together and on the water again. So obviously we are waiting for that. And I'm sure that no one will be upset if there is a last minute cancellation. They all, we all know what we are going through. But again, I think that dreaming to be able to sail our lovely Majesty 24 in Miami, it's a dream that maybe come true, who could know, but I think that it is a great energy to go through this. I mean, our, uh, Laura say, our boats are there, sailing will be there. I mean, we are missing a little bit, but we are not missing the end, you know? Yeah, I do agree, I do agree. <laughs> uh, Flavio, if we have to wait some more time to go sailing in the Europeans or in the world, you can have time to organize yourself to build up a new team, maybe along with Tiziano. <laughs> be, be a dream. That, that, that would be awesome. I, I, can't look, I can't wait for that. But uh, I, I, we have to talk to Franco tomorrow morning. I think he's, uh, he should be listening to this. It's, uh, Thanks for saying that. Maybe <laughs> we'll have a chat with Franco. But don't forget to give uh, a phone call also to Fede Valenti. Absolutely. <laughs> we go nowhere without him. Well, and, uh, we, we have some problem uh, for waiting now. <laughs> uh, guys, I remember the first time that I was traveling the world to follow one uh, Magus 24 world. I was uh, with both of you in Annapolis, and I remember some uh, incredible waking before the beginning of the event. With uh, The crew was made by Flavio, Sebastian Cole, uh, Fede Valenti, Stefano Rizzi, and uh, Il Capitano, and Ciccio Celon. And uh, they and you success inside of the way in, but it was really, really hard. All the time it was a battle. <laughs> so it's been a nightmare. <laughs> As Harry say many times, no more way in. <laughs> <laughs> so Maybe guys. A good idea. So guys, this is, uh, I think, uh, the end of uh, our chat regarding uh, the history of the Mergus 24. We are uh, live from one hour and a half, uh, and uh, I had uh, the honor to be the host of uh, a bunch of great sailing uh, rock star and some really, really good uh, sailing managers as uh, uh, Peter and Salmistu and Laura Grodin, uh, who are in charge of the secretary of the class and uh, the chairman of uh, the class uh, of the International Magus 24 Class Association. Uh, I was helped out by Fred Michetti, that is uh, 
the one of the most experienced experienced sailor inside of the Melges 24 and I have to thank uh, Fred Michetti I also want to thank Harry Melges that uh, uh, he's uh, the owner of uh, the uh, story of the Melges 24 is building the boat for uh, all the, the sailing passionates that are uh, uh, sailing inside of the class. We have uh, a great mix uh, right now of pro sailors and the Corinthian as we have uh, as we uh, perfectly know and we have uh, as as we have discovered again tonight. So many thanks also to Harry Melges, to Laura Grodin, to Pirex Salmistu and uh, to Tiziano Nava to Mike Buckley, Scott Nixon, Tonu Toniste, and Flavio Favini. Guys, thank you, everybody, to have uh, brings to me and to all our audience uh, some great memories of the Melges 24 class. I am also almost sure that uh, we are not so far to the return on the dock and to go sailing again, waiting for the warning signal of uh, a new Melges 24 event. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you, Mauro. Thank you, Mauro. Great job. Stay safe. See you and, soon. Uh, stay yeah, safe. And, uh, soon. Yeah. I can wait the time to be again on some uh, prize giving, uh, talking, uh, maybe without the mic, to all of you. Ciao, Bye. ciao, and uh, stay safe. Ciao. Good night. Bye. Good night.